The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. This evening begins the first night of Hanukkah for me. If you celebrate Hanukkah, Hanukkah Sameach, and uh, I hope that you and your loved ones or you by yourself will have a good and relaxing time filled with light. So without further ado, let's get to the books. So these two books I purchased through the Denver Public Library. Yay, yay libraries. And uh, the first book that I'm gonna review, I'd never heard of the book before, but I recognized the author and I was like, you know, I, I, think, I'm, I think I would like to have this book in my collection. So I don't know about you, but I've kind of noticed that a lot of my book buying purchases have been, have included children's books that meant a lot to me when I was younger. It, um, it was a pleasant memory back then and that I just enjoy reading over and over and over again. This one will be added to that collection and it is House Held Up by Trees by Ted Kuzer, illustrated by John Klassen. And for those of you who don't know who uh, Ted Kuzer is, he was the United States Poet Laureate from 2004 to 2006 and won a Pulitzer Prize for his book of poems, Delights and Shadows. He's also the author of 12 full-length volumes of poetry and several books of nonfiction, and his work has appeared in many periodicals. He is also the author of Bag in the Wind, his first picture book. Ted Kuzer lives in Garland, Nebraska. So I saw, like I said, I saw this book. It was at a uh, book sale by Denver Public Library and I recognized the name and I was like, I, yeah, I, I really would like to have it. So, so the story behind it is when the house was new, not a single tree, shoot or seedling remained in its perfect lawn. The children who lived there followed the scent of wild trees to neighboring lots where cottonwoods and elms, buckeyes and milkweed offered secret places to play. When the children grew up and moved away, their father, alone in the house, continued his battle against blowing seeds, plucking up sprouting trees. Until one day the father too moved away, and now, as the empty house begins to decline, the seeds, shoots, and trees approach once more. Both wistful and exhilarating, this lyrical story evokes time inexorable passage and the awe-inspiring power of nature to lift us up. And that is so true. Let me show some of the illustrations for you. Let's see. Um, yeah, like this. Just very calm, beautiful illustrations. But I, I, I mean, I read this book in like two minutes and yet it, it evoked a sense of quiet respect for the house and especially for the trees that held up the house. But it's a beautiful story and it, you can almost read it like poetry in a way. And uh, in fact, I think there, there might be a note at the back about, let's see. Oh, maybe there wasn't. Okay, I thought there was a note in the back regarding the story, but it's a beautiful, quiet story to read to your children. And even if you don't have children, it's just a beautiful book to have in your collection. And uh, so if you're looking for any kind of last minute gift idea and you just happen to be in the bookstore and you happen to see this book, House Held Up by Trees, I highly recommend purchasing this book. And like I said, you know, even if you don't have children, but you just like a beautiful book that, that tells a beautiful story, get a copy for yourself. So House Held Up by Trees gets Viridian Tea Houses, five pots of quiet, thought-provoking tea. Beautiful work. And I, I'm ashamed to admit this, but I've never read any poetry by Ted Kuzer, but that, that's going to change very soon. So thank you so much, Mr. Kuzer. Thank you so much, John Klassen. Thank you so much. This, this is a book that I, I just want to keep for the rest of my life. I, I truly do. Thank you. So the second book I've actually read before, and I remember how 
it haunted me, but in a good way. And it, it and another book, children's book that can be read kind of like poetry in a way. But um, I saw this book at the Denver Public Library and I, I was like, oh my gosh, is this, is this the same book that I read years ago? And I thumbed through it and I said, yes, it is. It's now mine. What am I talking about? Zen Ghosts by John J. Muth. This is one of the most beautiful, haunting, and touching stories I've ever read. And again, if you're looking for a last minute gift for a child or for someone who can appreciate a beautiful poetry like book and you happen to be in the bookstore, try either House Held Up by Trees or Zen Ghosts. Let me read the side for you. <clears throat> it's Halloween. The trees are ablaze in fiery reds. Excited children don colorful costumes and there's mystery and fun around every corner. When Addie, Michael, and Carl finish trick-or-treating, their bags are brimming with treats, but the fun isn't over yet. Their good friend, Stillwater the Panda, has one more special surprise in store for them. A mysterious visitor is about to tell them a spine-tingling story, one that will fill each and every reader with wonder. And that is so true. The story that the special guest tells the children, it's, it is a ghost story, but it's a beautiful ghost story. It's not one that's going to evoke, you know, trembling or fear or, you know, looking behind your shoulder, but it's a beautiful story nonetheless. And let's see, was there a note behind this one? Let's see, oh, John J. Muth has written and illustrated many enchanting picture books, including Zen Shorts, The Caldecott Honor, and the companion Zen Ties, which have been translated into more than 12 languages. The Three Questions, based on a Leo Tolstoy short story, was described by the New York Times Book Review as quietly life-changing and his exquisitely beautiful The Christmas Magic, written by Lauren Thompson, has appeared on a number of bestseller lists. Mr. Muth lives in New York State with his wife and four children. Let's see, was there a story? Yeah, this is actually, there's actually an author's note about the story that he portrays in the book, but this is a nice, Halloween book that it's it's a little bit fearful because it deals with ghosts but it's just it's beautiful and then of course you have the watercolor illustrations that is just like look at that look at that artwork simply simply divine um, this is a wonderful book to read during a tea meditation or reading it to your children, or enjoying it yourself with a nice cup of tea, of course. So Zen Ghosts by John J. Muth receives five pots of Viridian House tea. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so, so much for this book. This, although the theme it's set during Halloween, you can literally read this book all year, all year long, and the story never dies, it never loses its wonder and its beauty. And then the illustrations add to the sense of otherworldliness about it too. And Stillwater the Panda, I'll ruin the surprise, he's the, he's the ghost. But I like how the children are friends with Stillwater and they're not afraid of Stillwater because he's a very peaceful, zen-like ghost. So yes, zen ghosts, and House Held Up by Trees, two wonderful children's books that you, it's really good for all ages, honestly. And you know, these two are my copies and never getting rid of them, never. <laughs> so before I get to the tea portion, I do wanna say, um, so my boyfriend and I have been watching the World Cup and uh, today was the final game between Argentina and France. and. I love both teams, but allez les bleus, seriously. 
Unfortunately, uh, France did not win, Argentina won, but it was one of the best games my boyfriend and I had ever seen. So congratulations, Argentina. Congratulations, Messi. It was a fantastic, fantastic game. And I know that France worked really hard to get to this point and they really wanted to win, but the French team just was fantastic in its own way. So, merci beaucoup, allez les bleus. And uh, I did hear, I think in like 20 days, the Women's World Cup is gonna start in Australia and New Zealand. So I'll be watching with uh, both wide eyes. <laughs> So the tea portion. So this is actually one of my teas and this is a tea that I made some time ago, but I was waiting on one last ingredient and also I wanted to give the ingredients a chance to really co-mingle and get to know each other. So years ago I had my own chai and then I just decided to get rid of it because I thought, you know, I, I, I really just didn't want a chai. And then I thought about it and thought about it and I was like, you know, just go ahead and bring it back, but tweak it just a little bit, make it your own. So my new blend is Viridian Chai, and the ingredients are black tea, ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, pink peppercorn, cloves, and elderberry. So of course, I always make a pot and uh, I let it steep for about six minutes. Um, yeah, about five minutes, 45 seconds, six minutes between that time. Cause I, I really wanted the water to just enjoy the chai, which by the way, a little side note, when people say chai tea, they're really saying tea tea cause chai is another word for tea. So Viridian chai, that's the name. It's not gonna be Viridian chai tea cause I'm saying Viridian tea tea. Anyway, <laughs> here you go. Oh, and for the record, I did not have any sweetener added to this and I did not use any milk. This is just the straight up chai. Wow, that's a nice, that's a nice bouquet. That is really nice. So unfortunately I just brushed my teeth. So <laughs> thanks Crest, but <laughs> There's a lovely, lovely partnership of the ginger, the cardamom. The pink peppercorns have no heat. It's just more of the flavor and I'm getting that, that flavor added to the cardamom and the ginger. The cloves, not really that strong. Um, the elderberry, I'm kind of getting a hint of. And then of course, it's all laying on a bed of the black tea. The ginger, surprisingly, is not that strong, but as I have learned, when the temperature goes down, certain, certain flavors come up and certain ones kind of fade into the background. But right now, okay, I'm getting a little bit more of the ginger, but still it's the cardamom, the cloves, the elderberry and pink peppercorn, and it's just kind of like a hi we're, we're kind of here bed of the black tea but still my mouth feel it feels very velvety it feels kind of yeah velvety and soft and inviting i've noticed that with some teas it dries your mouth this does not dry the mouth at all this is This is a very good chai to have on a cold Colorado day as we're going through right now. So um, as always, once this video has been uploaded, I will be adding Viridian Chai to my Etsy store. You can go to, I think it's the main page of Viridian Tea House, click on the Etsy store link and you can order yourself a bag of Viridian Chai. I don't have any shipping deadlines for Christmas or any kind of holiday packages. 
if you just want some great tea, I'll be happy to ship it to you I, right up to, oh wait, actually, actually I'm going out of town <laughs> this coming weekend, but I should be back by Sunday. So please, if you um, will be ordering tea from me this week, I will try to get it. I will try to have it shipped out to you before uh, we head out of town. So thank you. That is really quite good. That, that that is that is very very good. So um, so yeah, Viridian chai will be available very soon on the Viridian Tea uh, Viridian Tea Company's Etsy store. A lot of Viridians, hard to keep up. Well, that really is it for today. Uh, it's a short video, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, much thanks to Ted Kuzer and John. Make sure I get his name right. John Muth for the beautiful children's books. And now let's end with a meditation. So find yourself in a comfortable position, either seated, lying down, or standing up. You can close your eyes or you can softly focus on an object before you. We're going to start with two breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're going to focus on our breathing. And then once we have breathe enough then we'll do one more in through the nose out through the mouth and then in with a cup of tea or a glass of water so if you're ready let's begin <clears throat> Now, as we end this meditation, let's take one deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or come into focus. Enjoy a nice sip of your tea or water. And we're done. Well, thank you as always for watching these crazy videos and I never edit, I never try to polish them. So what you see is me just being silly and goofy, but just sharing some good reads and good tea and good meditation. Um, let's see, I was trying to think, was there anything else? Oh, so I'm planting the seed. Um, Next month, I've got two events. I have Cosign in Colorado Springs. I'm very happy to be returning as a vendor. I think that's the last weekend of January. And then hopefully I will be returning to the Denver Magic Makers Market. Um, I forgot the date, but as it gets kind of closer, then I'll announce it in future Viridian Tea House episodes. And also, what else? Oh, yes. So um, as you, some of you know, uh, a lot of my tea blends are sold in Apothecary Fairy store in Littleton, Colorado in Aspen Grove. Well, the owner and I have been talking and I will be conducting tea workshops in her store. Uh, we haven't settled on any dates yet, but once we have cemented some, some dates, I'll announce them in a, f in a future video as well. So if you live 
in the Denver area or you're just passing through or what have you, I'll let you know when the tea workshop classes will be available so you can purchase your ticket and uh, we can just enjoy a nice cup of tea. So that's it. <laughs> and uh, again, for those of you who are celebrating Hanukkah with me tonight, Hanukkah Samayach. And um, I hope that the latkes are good tonight. And as always, take care of yourself and each other. Raise your teacup high. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.